purpose of the practical endorsement is to ensure that students experience and develop a wide range of practical skills during their A-level courses in the sciences. In the Department for Education subject criteria for the A-level sciences, Appendices 5b and 5c set out the practical skills that students must develop and the types of practical work that they must demonstrate. We've included that information prominently in our Science A-level specifications in Module 1.2. The first part of Module 1.2 sets out the generic skills that students must develop, ranging from following instructions and keeping records, to applying investigative approaches, carrying out research and citing sources of information. These skills are the same across all awarding bodies and apply to all three sciences. But remember, students must demonstrate them for each individual science that they are taking. By the end of A-level, students should be competent in all these skills. The second part of Module 1.2 sets out the specific apparatus and techniques that students must use in biology, chemistry or physics respectively. Again, these apply to all awarding bodies. All students must demonstrate competence, not necessarily perfection, in these apparatus and techniques too. Plus, there are a set of common practical assessment criteria, CPAC for short, that have been agreed by the awarding bodies to judge students' competence over the two-year course. These are divided into five overarching skill areas. The regulations state that students must be assessed across a minimum of 12 practical activities that incorporate all these skills and techniques. But you can spread the assessment over a wider range of practical work if you choose, and we at OCR encourage you to do so. To make it easy, we have grouped together all the required practical skills and techniques into 12 practical activity groups, or PAGs. These are in section 5 of our A-level specifications, with a table describing the skills and techniques covered in each PAG. Each student should complete, as a minimum, one activity from each of these groups. So in the OCR model, there are no set practicals, because we understand that practical skills can be linked to many different topics over the two years. We are providing practical activities that you could use if you wish, and these are available from Interchange. But you don't have to use these activities provided by OCR. There are many other suitable practical activities, for example those provided by learned societies or publishers, or indeed those you have developed yourself. The practical endorsement carries a single pass grade, which is awarded by the teacher if students have met all the criteria. It's reported separately from the A-level grade and will be written on the student's A-level certificate. Teachers often ask us whether students must work individually on the practical work. The answer is no. They can work in pairs or groups, but they must be able to demonstrate and record independent evidence of competency. So as a teacher, you must be confident of each individual student's competence. We are also asked whether assessed activities must be performed under controlled conditions. No, the practical endorsement is not coursework. Practical work can be carried out as part of normal teaching. Students can talk to each other, ask questions and receive guidance. The assessment requires students to consistently and routinely exhibit competence by the end of the course, not to be independently perfect on every occasion. So as long as a student has covered all the required skills and techniques, met the common assessment criteria, the CPAC, and carried out at least 12 practical activities over the two-year course, then they should be able to pass the practical endorsement. If you have any further questions about the practical endorsement or any other aspect of the new science A-levels, do drop us a line. <laughs>